Hello everybody, welcome. I'm No02. Thank you for watching this video. We're reading, beginning or continuing our journey here on our board game design. Working title is Sentient. I am aware there's already another another board game called Sentient, so it's a working title for now. The general gist is we are making a deck building game where we will play as an inanimate object going on a journey to gain full and complete sentience. We might be answering, what does it mean to be human? Getting real deep and stuff like that. Don't Google it. There's, there's some bad takes out there. <laughs> but we, what we're working on specifically here, and I sort of got a little ahead of myself as I was setting up for this. What is our four card types, right? There's going to be that main deck of cards, a lineup. That players will be purchasing cards from, putting them into your deck, thus the deck building experience. And we want four card types, or maybe three card types. And essentially those card types will allow for more opportunity for synergy and will be more thematically, like thematically correct for a lot of the card titles and things like that. It can help guide us, help guide us in card design, just in general. So, but I, th uh, I think the answer to what is our four card types can help, can be helped. <laughs> the answer to this is the answer to that. What does our deck represent in our narrative? Right, what does the deck represent in our narrative? The deck represents... ...the growth over time. So object. Of our object... ...slowly... ...becoming... Sentient slash AI slash self aware slash etc. Right? That's what that's what it represents. And so some examples of that would be like what if we, we imagine a card called dreaming or dreams, implying in the narrative that if you were to be the player who purchased this card, the toaster that you're representing has begun to have dreams implying that there's some sort of progress going on here as far as your inanimate object becoming an intelligent creature, <laughs> essentially, right? But what is the card type of dreams? How do we generalize dreams? Things like that, right? I have here intelligence, sentience, consciousness. Not necessarily that I don't... These are not going to be the card types themselves, but just sort of in a general sense. I've been doing a lot of research. I've been looking around at, like, what does it mean to be artificial intelligent? What does it mean to have emotions? What does it mean to be blah, 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 right? There's a long rabbit hole of like, what does it mean to be sentient? What is the major components of sentience? And let me tell you, <laughs> it seems like no one really has a clear cut answer. The best place that I went to, the best place that I can find to get the most like clear cut summarized answer was actually just googling my question and then looking in the images <laughs> and then looking in the images that was the best place to find super clear-cut indicators of what was going on here right we have like intelligence sapience consciousness sentience emotion all this random stuff right this long essentially rabbit holes look at this emotion wheel Whoa. There's a lot going on there. It's a sort of a rabbit hole here. But essentially, the, the idea is to have, like, cards that you purchase make sense narratively as to how they are contributing or how it sort of represents that your object is growing to a point of being an intelligent creature. So I just have these sort of base ideas here of, like, we're looking for intelligence, right? Capacity for learning, blah, 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 understanding, grasping facts, relationships, etc., a little too general, I think, for a card type. Sentient, having the perception of senses or consciousness, or conscience. And then consciousness, right? The state of being conscious, blah, blah, blah. Sort of an overlap here, right? I also thought of, like, possibly morals, right? A right, a right wrong concept as well. Which I assume morals, I don't know if that is in here or not. I don't know if morals fits into intelligence or consciousness, right? But if we were going to have the card types, right?
I'm thinking for sure that maybe we go down the road of like emotions or feelings, despite having our own like base emotion card lineup out there. The emotions and feelings, maybe we go like left brain, right brain, where we have like uh, where we have like uh, logic. Cards could be called like math or whatever, a a uh, arithmetic. <laughs> How do you spell arithmetic? Anyways. Math, arithmetic, right? Uh, reason? Would philosophy? Would philosophy fall into, into logic? Into reasoning? I don't know. I don't know. And then we can have, so we have like emotions or feelings and then logic. We can also have maybe... Uh, Creativity is a card type? Maybe philosophy is its own card type? Right? Stuff like that. I think this is sort of the road that we're going down here. Is what? How, how do we generalize into four components? Maybe it's only three. Maybe we have emotions, logic, and creativity. Maybe that's it. Anything here? Anything here? Mental activity, aptitude, relationships. Could we do like uh, we do like logic, creativity, social, <laughs> social. I don't know. Maybe this might come down to that. It's not the most important to be super accurate as far as breaking down what it truly means to be sentient or conscious or, or self aware stuff like that. And just going with the card types that I, that spring the most, that give the most inspiration as far as the card design and things like that, right? Could we have morals, right? Morals might be one. Something like that, right? And creativity could be like, uh, I mean, art. So you pick up the art card. But other, what other things could could we could uh, make design wise? Like, how do we name cards that make sense for being in the creativity category? And have those cards also then narratively make sense when you play them, stuff like that, right? Kind of hard, kind of annoying, and I enjoy it. I think there's just going to be no clear cut perfect depiction of it, maybe. And uh, let me tell you, I'm tired of reading people's <laughs> vague, big worded essays on what it means to be sentient. So, in general, an interesting topic, right? We're going deep. We're going deep in this board game design. I do think, though, that this ends up meaning that our card type of followers here is definitely not going to be in the main deck. Not going to be in the main deck, I don't think, like, having like, gaining people who <laughs> I guess friends and, and there's, nothing, there's nothing human about having friends. But I think I think uh, I think we're going to have a separate lineup for followers where maybe that will be our end game objective. Right, or end game objective. Something like that. Something like that. I think at the very least we got to move followers somewhere else. Duplicate our duplicate page. Rename it. Card type one. So now we have our four card types, and I think potentially followers might be our uh, game ending objective. Maybe there's a second track of, of followers, and uh, they'll be more expensive to acquire. So you would need to tap into the main deck first, grow your inanimate objects sentience before you can start purchasing these end game cards. And maybe in a very vague narrative sense, gathering these followers will help better represent that you are 
take, taking control of the world. Even to the point that maybe some of them would be like a government official, a world leader. Can you can you uh, can you purchase the, this world leader? <laughs> They're worth a lot of victory points, sort of thing, right? Something like that. Something like that. But I, I'm just not entirely sure. I think I think what I'm coming down to here is I really like the idea of logic. I think that is pointed enough. Pointed enough that it makes sense and vague enough that we're not stuck in a super deep box. We need to think about philosophy and logic and if that sort of falls into the same thing. Because right here, intelligence, I feel like, I don't know, capacity for learning, under grasping truths, meanings. I feel like that is sort of like uh, philosophy sort of stuff, right? Though I think maybe like... The connotative meaning of logic is that people typically wouldn't associate philosophy and logic together. Or maybe I'm thinking too much into this. But I also really like the idea of logic and creativity. Maybe maybe philosophy fits better into creativity. Just for the sake of our feeble human brains. Alright, maybe we do Maybe we do philosophy over here. And when I mean my philosophy is not having a card titled philosophy, but like having cards titled after a variety of philosophies. So like, and that is representing your your object, gaining understanding of those types and expanding the horizon and getting more a better picture of the world and things like that. Stuff like that. Morals I kind of like as well, but I'm I'm worried about what how far down the rabbit hole of morals can we go as far as card design, right? There can't be that many morals out there. Just look at the world. Zing, bam, got him. And maybe emotions and feelings. I think I think for sure. I think at least these feel like the three to me. Creativity, logic, and emotions and feelings make sense to me. And I think they'll make sense to others as far as like, I'm, you know, I'm an inanimate, you're an inanimate object purchasing feelings, purchasing cards that give logic, purchasing creativity cards that, uh, you know, help represent that you are growing. Things like that. I think I think we'll just start with that for now, right? I think that is the best way to go about it. We'll go we'll go uh we'll go logic question mark. I think we'll go feelings question mark. We'll creativity question mark. Card type four, I don't know. Maybe we don't need a fourth one. Maybe we don't need a fourth one, right? And so now, I do feel like these are a little vague for the most part, right? But we could do, right? But let's say for logic, we have like deduction and the card will read Right, and the card could read like uh real the top three cards of your deck. One into I put one into your hand. One on the bottom of your deck. One in your discard pile. Right? And I don't know, right? Like, so we are now at a point where the card types make sense for what we're trying to do. Can we link the card and title? 
that makes sense within the card type to what makes sense for what the deck does. Because, like, in the superhero deck building games that I've played, typically being, like, the Flash is assorted with, like, uh, was associated with drawing more cards. So, like, Speed Force allowed you to draw two more cards. Sort of makes sense, right? Super Strength gave you more power. And we have that same sort of sense of logic here as well. I don't know. I don't know, right? And then the card would typically... They have a cost. I think for now we would just... I think this is, this is the part of like board game production where like having some sort of symbol would more clearly indicate how, the, how much the card costs. But for the sake of our prototype, I think we just have to put down how much the card like cost and then a number. How good is this card? I don't know. Let's put it, let's give it a three. Let's give it a three. Costs three. We'll do, uh, we need, to, we need to count how many spaces it gets to the other side. <laughs> Do 20 spaces. We do we'll do VP for victory points. One. A lot of spaces. 30 spaces. <laughs> 30 spaces. And I know this card looks a little a little stubby. But in the end we'll like sort of we can once all the cards are written out, sort of just add spaces in between. And sort of stretch out all the cards to make them stretch out all the cards to make sense for what like uh, would fit onto a typical card card size post thing, right? You guys following? Does this make any sense, right? Also, too, I'm not sure how inspiring logic, feelings, and creativity is. Now I feel like I need to like Google logic, Google this, right? Google blah blah blah. I also think maybe we need to, like, logic would be like, uh, uh, uh maybe like, like a crossword puzzle. <laughs> maybe we imply that our, our toaster, our, our, uh, our growing and brain power toaster enjoys crossword puzzles, right? Maybe, maybe something like that. But I think right out the gate here. My, uh, I, I was thinking that, oh, getting the card types down would then inspire me to sort of make card cards. And I and now at this point, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I, I feel like we're, we're just going down a rabbit hole after rabbit hole as far as trying to figure out. But these cards can actually end up being stuff like that, right? So creativity, creativity, uh, singing, singing. Our toaster can sing now. <laughs> stuff like that, right? Could be, uh, do we want to do art? We do art appreciate... Oh, how do you spell appreciation? No, art appreciation? Is that how you spell appreciation? Oh, God. No, it's not. It's got two Ps. How silly of me. Or appreciation. Singing. Drawing. That's creative, right? If we were to make a card titled Propaganda, implying that our, our, our toaster now knows how to uh, feed people propaganda, what would that be? Would that be creativity? Would that be logic? Would it be feelings? Is propaganda more of a feelings thing, right? I think so. I think it's pro I think propaganda. What about dreams? Where does dreams go? I think creativity, right? Dreams. Your toaster can now have dreams. And these cards will do stuff, right? Dreams. Maybe dreams can be like uh 
Name a card. Check the top five cards of your of your deck. The card you <laughs> named is there. Draw it. The rest of the cards back in any in any order. Dreams, right? Kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Are you dreaming of a card that you wish you could have? Right? Maybe. Maybe. What is the... Oh, God. Control tab is... Alt tab? No. Oh, God. Get out of here. I'm trying to see if I can tab spaces instead of t slamming in 30 spaces here. <laughs> Cost two? I don't know. Was it shift tab? No, that goes backwards. Oop, nope, I don't know. I I feel like there's a way to to indent in the space you're in, right? EP. But we did it. Do we copy and paste the spaces? <laughs> we want one more, one less space. We're going to copy and paste the spaces. Bam, problem solved. Dreams, right? And so, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. It's sort of, sort of making sense to myself. Right? Feelings. Propaganda. Maybe we can have... Honestly, I think maybe we can have balance? Balance is... Achieving balance. That's logical. We're going to do balance. And we're going to say it's going to be one of the few logic cards that will interact. The emotion. With the emotion cards. Think about that, right? Think about that. Feelings. There. <laughs> I'm looking at feelings. This, this wheel has numb under angry. So can't multiple things make you make you numb? But we can do something like uh, scared. All right, we need scared. Rust. Yeah, 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 yeah. We like that. We like that. Proud. Shift tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surprised we can do like ooh, eager. Docked. All these potential emotions. <laughs> and the emotion of disapproval. Judgment. Right, stuff like that, right? Creativity. Just sort of getting the general idea down here, right? And I think to some degree... Running out, running out of a little bit of steam here for the ideas. Go back to our... To-do list.
back to our to-do list here. Because keep in mind, the card design is going to be the bulk of literally everything. Literally everything. Getting sentience. Or sort. Full of the world. Aim any objective. This is something that I'm not super happy with at the moment, that I, but we have an idea. Let's make a new document real fast. And we're going to call it... Uh, mechanics. Call it mechanics. <laughs> and so, for the mechanics of our game, we will have a... The main, too small, it's too small, too big, this might be too big, better, of we'll the main deck, represents the journey of the object, growing to Going towards sentience. But mechanically, it is a uh, entire game's worth of non starter cards. We'll do lineup as well. Slash lineup. Five cards will be played face up in the lineup. It'll be available for purchase by the players in between turns card spot will be replaced by cards from the main deck Player having five choices available at the start of their turn. All right, so that's one major mechanic. Typically, this is like super standard for all deck building games in general. Is this sort of concept right here? That's the main deck. All right, that's the main deck. The other major component that we have right now is the uh, I don't know what to call it. Basic emotions. It represents the raw understanding or yeah, the raw understanding Intelligent creatures can have. I think that's, then that's well, maybe, maybe I, I like typing that out. What I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I was worried about like having cards that are, these are emotion cards and these are feeling cards. What's really the difference? Feelings are a little more specific, emotions are more broad. But all feelings tie back to an emotion. 
Got it. Also, too, there's a logistics here to think about: is where where does where do these cards go? But for for the most part, right? Four stacks of. Four stacks of separate emotions, and it's uh, anger, disgust. It's a uh, fear, surprise, happy, bad. There also be they will also be available for purchase alongside the lineup. By the lineup. Yeah, once bought. The player's play zone. Maybe maybe we should make a little paint thing here to sort of just like represent how this might look. Because I think once we get to the objective, the like the actual objective line that I'm thinking of, the follower line, uh, the, the, I think the board becomes busy. Play zone. Act to activate what they do, <laughs> which will be indicated on the card itself, right? Any number of emotions can be tapped at a time. The start of a player's turn. They can untap one emotion, I'm, and I and I I talked about the last video, but I'm sort of hoping here that two things: one, that these effects will be unique enough that like players can potentially um, separate their their play style by sort of investing into these like into more heavily into one type of emotion or not like if you want to rule with an iron fist you can focus on anger and that'll yield maybe a different play style as far as how your deck is concerned and what cards you're interested in purchasing in the lineup so that they synergize best with your particular emotion setup and things like that two i also feel like maybe the there'll be some unique interactions here as far as like how the feeling cards work. Like thematically, the feeling cards will most will be tied more heavily into these emotion cards. And that'll make the feeling cards more unique. Or if you're going to be a player who is purchasing these cards, you're also then interesting in the feeling cards that relate to the emotion that you have purchased specifically. But also too, if you don't invest widely enough you there might be cards that show up in the lineup that are really good but they tie into something else right you're, you're focused on anger and disgust <laughs> like most of the internet and then a card comes up and you go oh that's a really good card to run if i had sadness maybe i'll purchase that card now and then on my next turn i'll start building up some sadness emotions in preparation for that card to cycle through my deck again things like that and I apologize if, you know, like when I say like these cards go directly into my play zone or like cycle into my deck again. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, there I will eventually start going down like let's write the rules up for the sake of like playtesting and things like that. But a little bit far down the line, uh, for the most part though, 
you buy cards, you go into a discard pile. When your deck runs out, you reshuffle your discard pile, and that is your new deck. And the cards that you have purchased are now sort of in the cycle of it all. Things like that. Sorry, my baby girl just... Reamed in her sleep. <laughs> but didn't move. What the heck? I think my two-year-old is having has started to have nightmares. Nightmares. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. Genuine inspiration. <laughs> oh yeah. What? So what are we building up to here? Have we? gone through the mechanic of the emotion setup that we have for this game. Gonna tap one emotion at a time. I think that's good enough. Here is the new thing, the follower lineup. As the objects gain understanding slash sentience. We can begin to convince others to join them. Convince others to join them. This one up being the main means of ending the game. A separate lineup build only with our type followers will be Filled after, uh, filled in B, filled in between turns. To line up of five cards. And here, here's the thing that I'm, 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 I'm imagining in my mind here is that, uh, most follower cards will simply be for the sake of VPs or victory points. Probably going into their own separate pile for the player. Counted at the end. The high EPs to cost ratio. All right, because the other cards that I've I sort of like right, the cards that I sort of designed is like this card costs two but gives one VP. This card costs three but gives one VP. So we might look at a card that's like three to one. Maybe we'll have a card in the follower lineup that's like uh, it costs five. But it gives three VP. Oh. Right. So keep in mind all these numbers are up to up for change, up for debate, right? I think the, the, the characteristic here is that we want the high VPs to cost ratio. To encourage players to purchase them. Encouraging them that the this will be the main way in which you will gain control of the world. The game ends when all of the Follower cards have been purchased. We want to ask ourselves how many cards in the follower deck will equal how long games can last. Stuff like that. But I think for the time, I'm not super happy with this idea. I'm not super duper happy with this idea here. If we were to darken here, 
Make it dark in here, right? So let's say we have... So the way the game looks is going to be set up is that we have... We'll have four players, right, sitting around the table. Each with their own deck of cards. And they'll have a discard pile on their other side. What have we done? We might... Or discard piles, right? So either way, bl blue, yellow, doesn't matter. Four players, and for the most part, they'll have two stacks of cards next to them. This sort of the logistics of how board games work on a table, right? You have to take this into consideration a little bit. And then we will have somewhere in the center of the board, right? It'll look something like this, right? We'll go horizontal this way. We'll do some red. Something like this. We'll do a green. Four little stacks right here. And do, gotta do one at a time. These will be what? These will be, will be white. Do we make a legend? Do we make a legend here? I'm thinking here, this is our... Oh, this is big. Uh, 24. This is our main deck. Color coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. Oh, there we go, there we go. Four emotion stacks. Yellow for discard pile. Play your main deck, right? And then sort of just in a general sense. All right, each player will have space in front of them that we, that we would consider their play zone, essentially. Because then, like, you'll eventually move cards in front of themselves to represent. And the reason why I'm not super-duper happy about, like, having an entirely new deck, or entirely new lineup, that there'll be a little deck of cards here, right? Sort of like, this is the main deck and then the lineup next to it. This is a work of art. This is a work of art. So this is sort of, in theory, what our game might look like. And I'm not super happy with the idea of having the main objective be its own entire lineup. And that it just takes up a lot of space on the board, I feel like. Potentially. But maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. This is why we need to get to a point where we need to get to play testing. Save that later. Since we do how how big that deck is, will represent how long the game can last and what have you.
any other types. So let's go back to the checklist real fast. Copy paste the to do list. Yeah. Design key uh, cards and keyword mechanics and make objectives, make starter cards, make rules. Keywords, we got the idea of logic, feelings, emotions, creativity. Typically a one here is to destroy. From the game. Permanently. I was going to say semi-permanently because sometimes there's mechanics or card. We can design cards that allow you to purchase cards from the destroyed pile and things like that. But remove a card from the... Remove a card from the card. Remove a card from the game. I need to maybe remove a card from the game. And the idea here is that uh, your starter cards typically suck in comparison to... Uh, in comparison to the cards that you are purchasing and thus if we can destroy our crappy starter cards that will make our de our deck more more lean it'll it'll cycle faster you can play your better cards more often things like that and your overall average power or understanding per turn will be higher allowing you to hopefully reach a point where you are able to buy the, the more powerful cards more consistently things like that destroy but is there anything that we can do here? I think, again, we want this to sort of be thematic as far as what we're doing here. I like so an idea that comes to me is like self-care. <laughs> is that a mechanic? Is that a keyword? Right? And it sort of falls into the idea of like treating yourself like a human being. Our, our, our toaster treats itself like a human being. And cards with that keyword will do a certain thing. I don't know what that thing is. Right? Don't know what that thing is. Feelings. Like that. The other thing, too, um, that we need to add on to here is a. We need a weakness card. And this may not make any sense to you. Do we need to kick back? This makes sense if you have played DC deck building game, but sometimes when it comes to the RNG of a deck building game that runs, oops, that's running like a main deck lineup, right? You have cheap cards, medium card, medium expense cards, really expensive cards. And this main deck is supposed to be shuffled at random. So if you draw cards out into the lineup, sometimes the lineup is very expensive and players will struggle to purchase cards in the lineup with the, just their starter deck alone. And you actually run the risk of that if the lineup is too expensive that you get stuck to a point where none of the players can actually purchase anything. You have multiple turns where players are doing nothing. So in order to, uh, evade, to avoid that, there was a separate stack of cards that were cheap, but only did limited things, right? And so essentially you didn't want to buy kicks from the kick stack most of the time with most of the characters in DC deck building, but you always had the option to do so. But at the very least, if the lineup was super expensive, on your turn you still ended up making some amount of progress. Do we want a kick stack? The weakness cards are cards that... uh. Through negative effects, bad things can happen to you. This is more mechanics, more potential mechanics. My deal was threat. That uh, you can somehow that some cards will have some risk reward where you generate threat, maybe. And those cards, I don't know if it goes into your discard pile or not. But I thought maybe like uh, the more threat your inanimate object has produced, 
the more expensive follower cards are, the more convincing that they'll need to follow you. So there might be some the mechanic here where you can purchase cards that increase your threat but have powerful effects, but you might run the chance of not being able to purchase followers as regularly, things like that. I'm not really sure, not super happy with it, but I think for sure there might, in order to keep some relevance to destroy cards in general over the course of a game, we might want some sort of way in which players can potentially gain threat over time. Maybe follower cards that are revealed can cause threat to happen and stuff like that. I don't know. A lot of a lot of a lot of what ifs here, right? A lot of what ifs. We can do our four emotions. Anger. Anger disgust. Your surprise, sad, happy. What do D? What do these cards do? What do these cards do? How do we take these four emotions? Also, what do they cost? Five? Five understanding? Maybe. Something mid range, I think. Something mid range. But what do these cute do? Can we make a card that when you tap it to activate a special effect? It is somehow melancholy, though ultimately benefits you as far as your your turn is concerned. Is that possible? I don't know. No. Sad in that maybe there's something benefit, but always something lost. I'm not sure. Anger disgust. I feel like anger disgust should be like do something now. Suffer consequences later, or do it too much, and it builds up, and you suffer a consequence, right? Because anger is not a healthy emotion in general, right? So I guess there are some opportunities for righteous anger. Don't know. I just don't know. Think about it throughout the day. Sort of looking at these, I just sort of like... Uh, but I, th I think once we start to put titles and names on the things, hopefully, like, th thinking throughout the day, things will start to make sense. Typically, I have my phone with me all the time, like a good um, human being. And uh, anything that happens, I typically write it down on my phone real fast. For instance, like, right, when my baby screamed, I talked about she has nightmares. Bam, we'll put nightmares in creativity. Does it actually fit? I don't care. It's there now. We're going to make a card. My two-year-old has nightmares. You can deal with it. In a fourth card type, maybe? Maybe we don't even have a fourth card type. And just on occasion, these follower cards, some of them might go into your deck as well. I was thinking like uh, we would have like general pop, populous, <laughs> populous, uh, general population. And this card will read, put into, Victory point. Put into your follower back. We'll have to define that as well in the rules. And then it's just I'll just be like cost. Cost five. Let's go copy. Let's go copy paste some uh, some spaces. VP three. So like uh, slightly above average cost for VP, right? But it doesn't technically do anything. But then another follower card could be like um, uh, how do you spell conspiracy? Fear <laughs> conspirat conspiracyist <laughs> conspiracy theorist. 
How do you spell theorist? Theories? Theorist? Oh, doesn't want to. We'll, we'll embarrass ourselves some other time. Conspiracy person. <laughs> Right, and we might say sort of right out the bat here that maybe this person is inherently cheaper to purchase comparatively, right? Than some of the other fallover cards. Start over, start over. To say though, it, this card maybe this card goes into per usual. I'm not typing out what the card is actually going to read, and typing out the idea of the card. Per usual does a thing. It. We don't have our space anymore. Our space copy. Right, so it has a more normal looking cost and VP value, but this follower card will go into your deck actually. So there's possibly some wiggle room as far as card design goes in that regard. Even the point of like we might have like world leader. Dang, getting the getting the favor of a world leader. Goes into deck. Does epic thing. Or is just I think we yeah, I think we want that. I think for sure. I think for sure we want that. And then I think when it comes to the follower deck in general, there will be more wiggle room because it's will it will not be the expected lineup to be purchasing um purchasing from initially. And so maybe it's totally random. You can have you know five super expensive cards come out at the same time, and that's just how the game is. That's the game. But maybe most of the deck will be made up like some general population card. Interwoven with more interactive cards for the most part. And there potentially could be some strategy there as far as like uh, seeing that the general population cards are sort of like on the forefront here. Like the lineup is initially mostly cheap cards for the follower cards. And so maybe you keep that in mind and sort of build more greedily into your deck. The hopes of getting more power later so that when the world leader like the more expensive cards do start coming out you've hit a point where you're you're boosting it up right because then the idea here is you spend your turn for the most part purchasing a card that does not make your deck stronger but you secure victory points right and that's some strategy that's some choice to be made things like that things like that yeah, so i think other things we need to think about is the kick stack is there a weakness card? And is there any way for players to interact? I know in DC deck building, the way players interact is through uh, attacking each other. There's cards that say attack on them, and then other cards that say defend. So you can attack your opponents and cause bad things to happen to them. Like that. So I think for the most part, for as far as an hour of time goes, I'm fairly okay with this. I got to admit, it's a little bit of pressure on me here as far as like going through this creative process, but also recording it at the same time, showing it to you guys. But sort of a slow trudge. Feels slow. Feels slow. Feels like we didn't get a whole lot done in an hour, but I think for the most part, you know, sometimes it's just building the game is just like sitting down and thinking and maybe and maybe the issue here is that i'm getting too into the narrative nature of it having 
trying to have card types that fit into the narrative. And then those cards also fit into the narrative what card, of what type they are, and then thus that dictates what the card does in general. I think maybe we want some cards that do that. But also, too, if we go back to uh, let's see, what makes deck building games fun, drawing more cards. And so we just might need to go and say, hey, you know what? Even though it may not make sense for being a logic card, we need cards that draw more cards, and that's it. That's the end of the story because we want fun cards. We want cool wombo combos, things like that. This is like this is like where the pure creativity comes from, things like that. But I'm actually really quite interested in trying to figure out these four emotion cards as well because I think this is where there's also another really interesting possibility there. Some other side stuff too that we can think about in the, in the future is like uh, uh, special rule sets for the lineup weeks to change the gameplay so even though this may not make sense narratively but like we have the lineup right now it's pretty typical five card lineup with the main deck you purchase a card from the lineup you replace that card that's been purchased and the new player takes their turn what if we changed how that worked a little bit how do we if what if we changed how that tweet like we tweaked it a little bit did it work differently what like what if at the beginning of every player's turn two cards come out and they get to choose one card to put on top of the lineup card and the that lineup card has two cards available to purchase from or something like that right things like that maybe there's some way to tweak it blah 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 maybe cards that are destroyed go into a single stack and there's a mechanic that allows you to put cards that are destroyed back into the lineup, things like that. Possibilities, possibilities. Again, just an hour a day, though, is sort of my goal. I need to go. We're sort of just chipping away at it a little bit, right? Just chipping away at it. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope, let me know what you guys think. If you're interested, if you're excited about this idea or concept or what have you, I'd appreciate it. I appreciate a little bit of feedback. And hopefully in time here, uh, once we start getting sort of in the groove of maybe maybe we need to leave this for last. Maybe we need to figure out all of the other bigger stuff first because I'm a little all over the place. I'm a little all over the place. A little spaghetti brain still. Maybe we maybe we start writing the rules down. We get everything else done first because this is going to be the bulk of it. So let's get everything built up around it and then we can just like get into a headspace where all we're doing is card design, card creativity interactions and just dig into that maybe we'll do that first maybe that'll be the key we'll think about it think about it sleep on it i appreciate it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the future